This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. Well, just about 45 minutes southeast of El Paso sits a small town full of rich history and character. We are coming to you live from Tornillo, Texas. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Draxler here for our small town spotlight. That's right. And I'm Andy Morgan. Every Wednesday, beginning today from now until the end of the summer, I think something 20 plus weeks, we're going to be featuring oh, yeah. a local small town community here in the borderland in our first stop for our small town spotlight series here in Tornillo, Texas. Excited to be here. We talked about it in our five o'clock hour. Uh, Carla, first time I've been here. And Same it's for me. Such a I cool love spot it. And, and so much going on here. I think one of the things that I was saying in our five o'clock newscast, I love when we drove in. I know. People are outside sitting in their front yards, you know, chit chatting. I think they were playing some cards. It's just such a beautiful small town vibe. We're here at the Tornillo Independent School District as well uh, at their new stadium, which I think is amazing for people to see that we have all this here right in our backyard. Yeah, right across the street pretty much. And, and I love the small town feel in terms of people, right? The people is what makes uh, a city Absolutely. or a town like this so special. Everyone greeting you with a smile and a handshake. But I do want to kind of get into some of the history behind Tornillo, as I'm calling it a diamond in the a desert. So, uh, and taking a look at some of this history, the town was first established in 1909 and got a post office that same year. It's also known for being an agriculture town that grows cotton and pecans, one of my favorites right there. The town located along the border and its port of entry with Guadalupe, Mexico was renamed in honor of uh, Marciliano Serna, an immigrant from Mexico who became an American hero in World War I. Fun fact, Torneo got its name from a Spanish word for screw bean bush, which is a hardy firewood. Might want to remember that for uh, some of these uh, trivia questions that we got. That's a fun Some fun fact. facts that we're going with. That there. is definitely a fun fact. One thing you said, that Torneo is famous for its pecans. Mm -hmm. I love pecans and cotton. And for that, you need a specific type of temperature, weather, I guess. That's you need right. a, a lot of moisture. You need the soil. I think you said to be 60 degrees. degrees, correct? All right. I think we have pretty perfect conditions uh, as yeah. of right now. The, the, as you can see, I'm a little shiny right now. I was actually, as we're going to... Uh, toss it over to uh, Robert Bettis. Yeah. Robert, I feel like it is about 15 degrees warmer than the last time that we uh, checked in with you. Well, Andy, you're right, and I like that. Uh, I prefer glowing, Carla, if we can, we're glowing on TV. That's because the sun came out, but we talk about a chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms all the time, and it's perfectly on display right as you can see. Look at beautiful Tornillo High School behind me, but if we pan over here toward the east, toward Mexico, aha, there's one thunder shell right there. Saw some lightning in the distance. A few minutes ago, we had a couple of drops of rain on the radar composite. We've got some action moving through Las Cruces, Alamogordo. We'll keep that chance of thunder showers in for us tonight. I'm going to have your detailed forecast. We'll talk about when the storms go away and a surprise guest that I think you all will recognize coming up in just a bit. Carla? Andy? Robert, thank you so much. And of course, we're here uh, with Coyote Stadium just behind us, part of the uh, Tornillo Independent School District. And we've touched on some of the great things that Tornillo ISD has done in terms of uh, early education, the STEM programs, the art programs that they have, the graduation uh, success rate, no doubt about that. Uh, and also four schools here within Tornillo ISD, including uh, an early college high school. Yeah, that's right. And we have a reporter, Tawny Davis. She spoke to the superintendent and she will tell us more a little bit about, uh, you know, all their achievements. Tani. Andy, Carla, you know, some of the, the, the Tornillo ISD district may not have the same enrollment size like some of the larger districts, but do work with the students they have to give them the opportunities to succeed. From pre-K to 12th grade, Tornillo ISD has created pathways for students who want to go into a specific field. This includes their STEM and humanities program that lead into high school. With this investment, the district has continuously been recognized. We have back to back been honored um, uh, through the computer science um, uh, nationwide as far as us providing computer science to females. And so that's something that we're very proud of. 
With the district being smaller than others in the borderland, it allows for teachers and administration to work with the students closely. We're here to do what we need to do for kids and for families, and that is more, uh, more better, most better, most best here, uh, in my opinion, again, coming from a big district. I just love working here and with the people that I work with. This will be the first year Torneo ISD will graduate their first students from their early college high school. Also, in their third year, the district will be graduating their high school students with an associate degree from Western Tech. This will allow them to get a job right out of high school and scholarships that will allow them to get their bachelor's degree. You just usually hear this in bigger districts and it's like, wow, how is Torneo making it happen? You know, that is our mission. That was our vision for our district. And that's what we are placing all of our efforts into it. Vega Barrio says that they are trying to put the students and the community forward by making sure that all students are in a program that they do want to be in. Reporting live from Torneo, Tani Davis, KTSM 9 News. Tani, thank you very much for that report. Doing big things here at Torneo ISD. And when it comes to Torneo, the city, right? We're talking about the 2020 census and what yeah. makes this a small town. 2020 census, about 1,400 people wow. making up this community. And that's how you get that small town vibe, exactly. right? Exactly. It feels like one big family. Yeah. And I feel very welcome here. Everyone from the Torneo ISD was talking to us. They were joking around. Absolutely great vibe here. But I'll just let you take a look yourself. Well, uh, out here, uh, living in, uh, in small towns, well, you enjoy the, the culture, uh, that kind of stuff, so it's really nice. It's home. It's home. We're a family community here. You know, we're all one. Um, everybody knows everybody, and it's really... Tranquilo, it's calm here, you know? We all look out for each other. It's safe. I feel safe here. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, the, the community is pretty awesome. The people here... Um, okay. Uh, ten years ago, when we got here, we were new to the community. We were new to the people. They they they've been pretty good. They're they're awesome. The thing is that it's real quiet, peaceful out here in town. Uh, there's not much things to do, but it's quiet. It's not like the big cities that you go out there and live in the cities, and there's always things to do that you really don't have time to really sit down and enjoy your your afternoons. So that's why I've been living here for over 45 years now. Hideaway Lakes is down the road. I know that much. El Paso is not that far from here. We're like 20 minutes from El Paso. Like 90% of, of what I have here is local. Yeah, 90%. Thanks to our Sean Felice for that wonderful report. I love how one of the residents says, it's just an awesome, awesome, awesome community. Hey, I agree. Very it's, simple. It's, well said. It's the people that make up the community that make it so special and some exactly. of the best right here in Torneo, Texas. Well, don't go anywhere. We have more, much more coming up here in our first installment of Small Town Spotlight live from Torneo, Texas. Stay with us.
new Toyota during our spring sales event. Visit us at 6330 Montana. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderland's only certified broadcast meteorologist. Okay, kids, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Orale! <laughs> yes, Torneo High School and on, Charlie Clark here. We've got, we've got, come on, guys, hey, let's get hey, for, folk hey. to go. Bobby Bone over here yeah. clapping it off. I'll tell you what, what a great town, Torneo. They get all the great weather, and they certainly get more rain than everybody else. So let's take a look at that radar composite right now. We just had some thunder showers go through southeastern El Paso County. That's moved off to the north at this point, but I want to keep the chance of thunder showers in. And here comes your forecast. Stop. we go. Thursday will also be a muggy day with a high temperature of 88 degrees, partly cloudy skies through most of the day, but by late day, we'll see the clouds build up with a chance of isolated late day thunderstorms, isolated showers as well. Here are the high temperatures so far today, 86 Alabogordo, 84 Deming, 90 in Juarez, 89 El Paso, and 86 for Las Cruces. Winds are flowing in tonight from the southwest, anywhere from 5 to about 15 miles per hour. Normally, a southwest wind will dry us out, but not this time. On the satellite radar composite, you can see all the moisture coming in from the Pacific across northwestern Mexico. So we can expect not only a chance of isolated showers and thunder showers tonight, but we can expect another round of those monsoon-like storms and showers for our Thursday afternoon as well. Partly cloudy skies, severe storms possible in the north part of the panhandle of Texas. Here are your low temperatures tonight. 61 Alabogordo, 59 Deming, 66 Wattis and 63 for Van Horn. Your high temperatures tomorrow, 87 Alabogordo, 85 Deming, 90 for Wattis and 89 Van Horn. Tonight for you, Las Cruces, 60 the low temperature with partly cloudy skies. You'll still have that chance of an isolated area shower or storm late into the night tonight. Tomorrow, similar forecast with a high temperature of 88. Yes, that muggy feel will be back with dew point temperatures in the mid 40s. 65 low temperature at the International Airport tonight with that chance of isolated showers and storms well into the evening overnight hours. 88 high temperature for tomorrow. Sunrise at 607. Only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. On Thursday, of course, that chance of storms, but we get a day off on Friday. 90 degrees, that high temperature, partly cloudy skies. There's really only the slightest chance of a shower on Friday. Friday in the area and mainly up in the mountains, but everything changes on Saturday. A low pressure system comes in and will not only see a chance of thunder showers, potentially strong storms and a high temperature of 85 degrees. 86 on Sunday, partly cloudy, slight chance of area showers. Then we downgrade that to almost no chance on Monday with a high temperature of 90. We dry right back out. 91 on Tuesday, Wednesday, 92, 94 by Thursday with sunshine and a few clouds on Friday with a high temperature of 85. People say, hey, mm -hmm. that's what people say, hey, mm -hmm. so on too many days. There we go, there we go. I can make them stay. Hey, that's what people say, hey. Mm -hmm. Now, that's you do realize say, that. Uh, hey. Between Bobby and uh, Charlie Clark, we've taught the cheerleaders and the folkloreico team from uh, Tornillo Elementary School a whole different set of dance moves. But Absolutely. That's small town fun, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Ready to go? Ladies and gentlemen, the green ghost in person. Ready, kids? One, two, three. Orale! Now, Charlie, quick question. You grew up in McAllen, McAllen Texas, McAllen, down Texas. in the Rio Grande Valley. Yes. You love small border. towns like small this? Towns, yeah. Hey, we brought in the humidity just for you because it's humid down I'm in the valley. You, that's why we're still the reigning champions. <laughs> you stop. You stop I'm just it. <laughs> okay, so um, Charlie Clark is uh, uh, sponsoring these wonderful small town spotlights, which KTSM loves every single viewer in the entire borderland. 
and you love them too. Absolutely, and I want to start doing this at all small towns up and down the border, and up here near El Paso. Uh, I didn't know about Tornillo. I, I'm so happy. I just got to meet a lot of the parents, these wonderful jóvenes, and I want to come out here, have a lot of fun. I've invited them to come to our dealership on Saturday and put on their folklorico dance, so it's going to be wonderful. fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Thank Charlie, you. thank you so much. Okay. Carla, Andy, back to you. Bobby, hit us with another song. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, play is going to play, 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 play. <laughs> hey, it's going to hey, 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 hey. Segment sponsored by First Light Federal Credit Union, your better credit union. And now, KTSM Nice Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen Byers and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Welcome back to KTSM 9 News at 6, our small town spotlight live from Tornillo High School. I'm standing here on the football field and the athletics programs at Tornillo have been some of the best that they've seen in recent memory the last few years. A golden era, if you will, of Coyote athletics from state championships to the first division one recruits in school history. Let's take a look at the last couple of years at Tornillo's athletics programs. The last two years of athletics at Tornillo High School have been arguably some of the best in school history across multiple sports. On the diamond, the baseball program has won at least one playoff series in each of the last three years. Perhaps the best team in Tornillo history went to the 3A regional quarterfinals in 2021. That year was huge for the Coyotes. Lizbeth Fieto won the 3A silver medal in the shot put at the UIL state meets, then became the first Tornillo athlete to ever earn a Division I scholarship signing with UTEP. It's a great honor because it's hard to inspire girls here because they think only guys could make it far in life. But I'm trying to change that, to make girls believe that we could do it. It doesn't mean that just because we're a girl, 
doesn't mean that we don't have the strength as a guy. The next year, the track was even kinder to the Coyotes as Angel Torres medaled twice at the 2022 state track meet. Torres finished with a bronze in the 3200 meters. Then later that night, he became the first Tonio athlete to ever win a state championship in any sport, taking gold in the 1600. I remember Coach told me right before the race, at 250 meters, no one can outkick you. So I thought about that, and I waited till the last 100, and I went, and it hurt so bad, but it was worth it. It feels good to represent Tornillo and all of, all of El Paso. Daniel Romero followed in Torres' footsteps this year at state, running the 3200 and the 1600 meters, finishing 6th and ninth respectively in those events. On the hardwood, the Tornillo boys basketball team spent much of the 2022-23 season ranked in Class 3A in the state of Texas. The Coyotes rolled through much of their season going undefeated in district play. They ultimately finished the season 30-2. and two. To be state uh, recognized, I mean, that's a big accomplishment, but it's like a big target in our back as well. I mean, we have a, a standard. We already met that standard, so we just got to go up from there. They're a small town with a lot of fight, and Tornillo hopes to continue the success they've had into the coming years. Tornillo is also looking to add a soccer program to its high school athletics. They've actually added it at the middle school within the last few years. They're hoping in a couple of years to bring that high school, uh, that soccer program to the high school level. Here's their superintendent talking about the plans for that. We have um, this interest in soccer, so we are looking into that uh, in the next two years. Like we wanted to solidify our middle school groups first, so that as they are moving up to high school, then we're able to, to get that going. So we have the beautiful facilities to provide that, uh, but now it's just a matter of getting our program solidified. And joining me now is the athletic director, head football coach, head basketball coach, and assistant baseball coach at Tornillo, Luis Vega. Thanks for taking some time. Take me through your daily life here because that is a lot of hats to wear as the head coach of two sports, the assistant, and of, of course the athletic director. Uh, small schools, you do everything around here. Uh, we help each other out. There's uh, coaches who teach, coach. Uh, they drive a bus, and I mean, we, we do everything around here. So. Uh, that's uh, the nice part about being in a small town. Uh, not many, many, many kids, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, we get to provide as much as we can, not only by providing the, the athletic part, but connecting with those kids. Yeah. Obviously, your football program, unfortunately, had to put, cancel the season after eight games last year due, due to a lack of players. How's that looking for this year? Having, are you planning on having a 2023 season? Yes, we have a, we're planning on having a, a season this coming school year. Uh, we got plenty of kids coming out. Uh, our junior high kids are uh, signing up. So we have about 30 kids so far signed up. And uh, we are looking forward to working hard on the field, working out in the weight room, and uh, make Tornillo proud like always. That's good news. Lastly, we heard from Angel Torres a second ago. He actually had an awesome opportunity uh, a couple weeks ago at going to a, a running camp mm -hmm. in Kenya. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, Angel was fortunate enough to where his brother and sister were able to provide a, uh, uh, a ticket to go to a camp in uh, Kenya, in Africa, during spring break. And uh, he just trained out there with the best in the world, I guess. And uh, I, he just came out of here with lots of uh, enthusiasm and working hard and showing the other the other kids around him what it takes. First gold medalist in Tornillo history, hoping to go run at UTEP in, a, in the next years so you could see him running for the minors. Luis Vega, the athletic director, football coach, basketball coach, assistant baseball coach for Tornillo. Thanks for taking some time, and uh, we've enjoyed our time out here in Tornillo for the small town spotlight, no doubt. Colin, thank you very much. And that's right, it is a wrap here from Torneo. But here's the big thing. You see that QR code on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen? It's right here. Scan it. We want to know where, where are we going next week because we're doing this every Wednesday from now until the end of the summer as part For of our many, Small many Town weeks. Spotlight series. We had so much fun. I hope you guys had as much fun as we did. But don't go anywhere because KTSM 9 News Now is next.